Next up on WTV, consequences for not wearing ID badges, this week's edition of Real Talk, and a look at tonight's football and volleyball games. WTV's daily update starts now. Good morning, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Friday, September 7th, and I'm Jordan Klein with today's daily update brought to you by Wingspan TV. While students have had their ID badges for several weeks, the consequences for not wearing them are just now going into effect. WTV's Surya Ravachandran has the details. For the first time in school history, all students and staff will be required to wear their ID badge all day on campus. Failure to do so will result in various consequences. The first time a student is sent to the office for not having their student ID visible will be a warning. The next time it happens will result in a lunch detention, with a third time leading to a reflection. A fourth offense will be a referral to an assistant principal along with a call to parents, with a fifth offense resulting in an outside-of-school suspension. For school resource officers Glenn Hubbard, this is an important change to school security. The ID badges allows the staff and other students to know who's in the school. They have the ID badge on, has their picture on, you know they belong here. Well, hopefully it'll help them feel more secure. Um, they're taking a little bit of ownership of the security of the school. Adding an extra layer of security, the ID badges will help school officials make sure students are leaving campus at the right times with each ID indicating whether a student has late arrival, early release, or a CTE class. However, ensuring that only Liberty students are on campus is the main focus of the change. One of the biggest issues we've always had on our campus is making sure that only students that are Liberty students are on campus. We have so many exterior doors and students are frequently opening doors to let kids in, and the biggest threat is letting in a student that, that actually doesn't belong to our campus. School administration hopes that the change leads to greater campus security without sacrificing any liberties for the students. And that was something that our students felt like, that ID badges were a step that they could take towards in improving safety and security on campus, but also maintaining some of their autonomy and some of their personal freedoms on campus. Reporting for WTV, I'm Soraya Ravachandran. Many students attending the pep rally last week found themselves sitting on the floor in the gym. WTV's Isabella Santiago takes a look at whether school spirit is affected by little gym seating. To celebrate homecoming this weekend, the second pep rally of the year is today during fourth period. But with approximately 2,000 students on campus, the main gym can't hold everybody. Well, it, it, it kind of makes things a little congested, but um, I think there are some things that we're working on to try to alleviate the spacing and make sure that everyone has the ability to participate and enjoy themselves in the pep rally. Although students have the option to go to the cafeteria for study hall time, they are still encouraged to attend the pep rallies. We just want our students to come out and be involved and get rowdy. That's the time for you to do it. However, some students on campus don't believe the lack of gym space impacts school spirit. I think it's a good thing to have. I think it definitely helps a lot and gets people excited for the game or whatever's going on that week. For WTV, I'm Isabella Santiago. On this week's edition of Real Talk, WTV's Remy Williams hits the halls to ask students about homecoming. This is WTV's Remy Williams with this week's edition of Real Talk. And today we're going to hit the halls and find out how students feel about homecoming. Are you going to the homecoming football game? No, because I have to go and get a haircut. How are you going to feel if the weather's bad during that? I'm going to cry because I really want to go. <laughs> Why wouldn't you go to your first homecoming? Uh, I don't know. I guess it would be awkward because no one else, I guess, in freshman year usually goes to homecoming. And uh, I guess being there by yourself would just kind of feel awkward while everyone else is like seniors and juniors. What are you most looking forward to homecoming? Hanging out with my friends, <laughs> I guess. That's kind of it. Are you going to homecoming? No. Why not? Um, I, think, I just think it's dumb. Unless you don't have a date, like you don't really have anything to do. And you're just kind of standing there, so... Um, Are you going to the homecoming football game? Nope, I don't want to go. It's not my vibe. Do you think there'll be a problem with the heat with homecoming being so early? Um, probably not. I mean, I guess there's no really problem associated with that. Yeah. Are you going to the homecoming football game? Yes, because I'm in band. How do you think the team's going to do? I hope we're going to win, but I think we may lose. I'm Remy Williams, and this has been another edition of Real Talk. Football takes on Creekview tonight in the homecoming game, and volleyball takes on Lone Star. WTV Sports has the preview. 
Red Hawk Sports are busy with two teams in action tonight. Volleyball plays in their 5th district matchup in what is shaping up to be a competitive race for a playoff spot. Five teams currently sit at 3-1 in District 9-5A. After a loss to Lakeland, the team found their stride now coming off a three-game winning streak, looking to continue that tonight against Lone Star, who holds a district record of 1-3. The game will begin at 5.30 at Lone Star High School. Tonight is the homecoming game for the Red Hawks football team with Friday Night Lights at Memorial Stadium. For the team, the homecoming atmosphere is unmatched to the other games they play throughout the season. The homecoming atmosphere really hypes everyone up, especially during the game on the sidelines and in the locker room at halftime. Everyone's you know freaking out because it's homecoming. We're all ready to go, ready to play to make everyone happy. The team faces off against Creekview, who is ranked 1,001 in the state according to Max Preps. Senior offensive lineman Stafford Johnson said the team learned a lot from last Friday's loss to North Garland. Last week's game, we learned that uh, you can't come out expecting the win. You can't come out, you know, super cocky and you know just all about how you're going to win. You know, when you're going to win, how you're going to win, everything. You know, you have to just play hard and give effort on every single play and we can't take any reps off. The game is at Memorial with kickoff at 7 p.m. For WTV Sports, I'm Davis O'Brien. If you're looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. WT's Wade Glover brings you today's announcements. Volleyball takes on Lone Star tonight at 5.30 at Lone Star. Football takes on Creekview tonight at 7 o'clock at Memorial Stadium. There is a pep rally today to celebrate homecoming. Homecoming tickets are now available for purchase on My Payments Plus. Students can purchase homecoming tickets today during lunch. Key Club has a meeting on Thursday before school in the auditorium and after school in the lecture hall. That's it for today's daily update. This has been Jordan Klein with Wingspan TV.